The pathetic Malon aliens groveled and wept, prostrating themselves before the human race they once thought to conquer, having learned a brutal lesson in the ferocity of mankind when their invasion of Earth ended in catastrophe. In a dimly lit dive bar on some godforsaken backwater space station, two defeated Malon warriors, Juno and Zark, slumped over drinks that glowed an eerie blue. Juno stared into his glass as if the numbing liquor contained the answers to where it had all gone wrong. Remember when the damned Emperor declared we would conquer the humans? Juno asked bitterly. Take their planet for the glorious Malon Empire. Zark's antennae twitched as he nodded. It should have been easy. The briefings claimed they were primitive. Our fleet outnumbered theirs ten to one. Juno took a long pull from his drink. The alcohol burned, but not as badly as the disgrace of defeat. We demanded their surrender, Juno spat. And they had the audacity to refuse to fight back. Those apes shouldn't have stood a chance. No one expected the humans' ferocity, Zark said. Their small, swift attack craft flew circles around our battleships. Kamikazes rammed straight through our shields. They used their own ships to block our cannon volleys. And that thrice-damned human commander, Terry Collins, Juno snarled. No matter our battle plans, that genius was always a step ahead, predicting our every move. Zark leaned closer, perplexed. I still don't understand how it ended. How did the humans actually force the Malon to abandon our conquest? With a shaking hand, Juno drained the rest of his drink, slamming the glass down. His eyes closed as his shoulders slumped. In the most humiliating way imaginable, Juno said, that's how it ended. Groveling like whipped mongrels begging our masters for scraps, the mighty Marlin fleet, broken and on our knees, pleading for human mercy. Juno signals the bartender for another round before continuing. Our emperor, in his arrogance, believed that attacking Earth cities would break the human spirit. He was wrong, dead wrong. Zark leans forward, gripping his drink. What happened? We bombed their cities, targeting their infrastructure, their homes, their families. We thought we could force them to surrender by making them suffer. Juno's voice grows hushed, haunted by the memories. But the more we attacked, the harder they fought back. Even as their buildings crumbled and their loved ones died, they refused to yield. I don't understand, Zark says, shaking his head. Why would they keep fighting when they had already lost so much? Juno meets Zark's gaze his eyes hollow. Because they were fighting for something greater than themselves, they were fighting for their freedom, for their way of life, and they were willing to sacrifice everything to protect it. Zark sits back, stunned by the revelation. I've never heard of such resolve, such bravery in the face of overwhelming odds. Nor had I, Juno admits. We underestimated the strength of the human spirit. We thought we could break them, but instead they broke us, he takes a long drink, wincing as the alcohol burns his throat. In the end, it was Terry Collins who dealt the final blow. He led a daring counterattack, striking at the heart of our command ship. His forces fought their way through our defenses, room by room, until they reached the bridge. Zark's eyes widen. What happened then? Juno's voice grows bitter. Collins himself confronted our Emperor. He offered him a choice— Surrender and face trial for his crimes against humanity, or die there on the bridge of his own ship. Hand the Emperor, what did he choose? Juno's laugh is harsh and mirthless. What choice did he have? Collins had already beaten him. The mighty Malon Empire, brought to its knees by a single human. In that moment, the Emperor realized the truth. We had never stood a chance against the human's determination and courage, and so he surrendered. Zark shakes his head in disbelief. I still can't believe it. The Malon Empire defeated by a race we once thought primitive and weak. Juno nods, his expression grim. We learned a hard lesson that day. A lesson we'll never forget. The humans may not have had our technology or our numbers, but they had something far more powerful. An unbreakable will to fight for what they believed in. And in the end, that was enough to defeat an empire. Zark's mandibles hang open in shock. Revenge? What do you mean, revenge? Surely the humans were satisfied with their victory and our retreat. Juno shakes his head, a haunted look in his eyes. If only it were that simple. 
No, the humans weren't content with just defending their world. They wanted to make sure we could never threaten them again. He takes a deep breath, steeling himself for the painful memories. After our retreat, we thought the war was over. We limped back to our own territory, licking our wounds and trying to rebuild our shattered fleet. But we had no idea what the humans were planning. Juno's voice drops to a whisper, forcing Zark to lean in closer. They called it Operation Righteous Fury. While we were still reeling from our defeat, the humans launched a massive counterattack. They had secretly built a fleet of advanced warships, equipped with weapons that made our own look like children's toys. Zark's eyes widen in disbelief. They attacked us in our own space. Juno nods grimly. They did. Led by none other than Terry Collins himself, the human fleet struck at the heart of the Malan Empire. They targeted our shipyards, our supply lines, our command centers. They hit us hard and fast, giving us no time to regroup or respond. He closes his eyes, the memories of those terrible days washing over him. We tried to fight back, but it was like swatting at a swarm of angry hornets. The humans were everywhere, striking with a precision and coordination that we could never match. And all the while Terry Collins was there, leading the charge, outsmarting us at every turn. Zark shakes his head, trying to process the enormity of what he's hearing. But how did it end? How did the humans finally defeat the Malan Empire? Juno's shoulders slump, the weight of his shame and regret bearing down on him. In the end, it was Terry Collins who delivered the final blow. He led a small team of his best warriors on a daring raid, striking at the very heart of our empire. They fought their way into the Imperial Palace itself, facing down our most elite guards and cutting them down like wheat before the scythe. His voice trembles as he recounts the final fateful moments. They confronted the Emperor in his own throne room. Collins himself stood before him, his weapon trained on the Emperor's heart. He gave him a choice, surrender unconditionally or die there, on the throne he had so arrogantly claimed. Zark's breath catches in his throat. And the Emperor, what did he choose? Juno's laugh is bitter and mirthless. What choice did he have? Collins had beaten him utterly and completely. The once mighty Malan Empire brought to its knees by a single human. In that moment, the Emperor realized the truth. We had never stood a chance against the human's courage and determination. And so he surrendered. Zark sits back, stunned by the revelation. I had no idea. I never knew the full story of how the war ended. Juno nods, his eyes distant. Few do. It's not a story the Malon liked to tell, but it's one we'll never forget. The humans taught us a lesson that day, one that we paid for in blood and shame. They showed us the true meaning of strength, of courage, of the unbreakable will to fight for what you believe in. And in the end, that was enough to bring an empire to its knees. Zark leans forward, his eyes wide with disbelief. They attacked our economy. How is that even possible? Juno sighs, the weight of the memories heavy on his shoulders. The humans are resourceful, Zark. They used the technology they captured from our ships to hack into our systems. They planted viruses that shut down our factories, corrupted our databases, and even manipulated our financial markets. He takes a sip of his drink, his hands shaking slightly. At first we didn't even realize what was happening. Production slowed, orders went unfilled, and prices fluctuated wildly. But by the time we figured it out, it was too late. Our economy was in shambles, and our people were starting to lose faith in the Emperor's leadership. Zark shakes his head, trying to wrap his mind around the scope of the humans' actions. But why would they do that? Why not just attack us directly? Juno laughs bitterly. Because they knew that defeating us militarily wasn't enough. They wanted to break our spirit, to make sure we could never rise up against them again. And what better way to do that than to destroy the very foundation of our society? He leans back in his chair, his eyes distant. The Emperor tried to rally our people, to convince them that we could still win. But it was too little, too late. The whispers of rebellion grew louder, and even some of his most loyal supporters began to question his leadership. Zark's brow furrows. So what happened next? How did the Emperor respond to Colin's offer of surrender? Juno's mandibles twitch in a humorless smile. What choice did he have? 
Our fleet was in ruins, our economy was in tatters, and our people were on the brink of revolt. He had no choice but to accept the humans' terms, no matter how humiliating they might be. He takes another sip of his drink, his voice growing quieter. But even then the humans weren't finished with us. They had one final demand, one that would forever change the balance of power in the galaxy. Zark leans forward, his curiosity piqued. What was it? What did they want? Juno meets his gaze, his eyes haunted. They wanted us to dismantle our empire, to give up all the worlds we had conquered and return them to their rightful owners. They wanted us to pay reparations to the civilizations we had wronged, to help them rebuild what we had destroyed. He shakes his head, his voice trembling. It was a bitter pill to swallow, Zark, to give up everything we had fought for, everything we had believed in. But what choice did we have? The humans had us by the throat, and they knew it. Azark sits back, stunned by the revelation. I can't believe it. The mighty Malon Empire brought to its knees by a single species. How could we have been so wrong about them? Juno drains the last of his drink, slamming the glass down on the table. We underestimated them, Zark. We thought they were weak, primitive, easy to conquer. But we were wrong. The humans are unlike any species we've ever encountered. They're tenacious, resourceful, and above all, they're willing to fight for what they believe in, no matter the cost. He leans forward, his eyes boring into Zark's. And that's a lesson we'll never forget. The humans taught us the true meaning of strength, of courage, of the unbreakable will to fight for what you believe in. And in the end, that was enough to bring an empire to its knees. Zark's eyes narrow as he processes the shocking revelation. The Emperor, dead by his own hand? I never thought I'd see the day. His pride was legendary. Juno nods solemnly. Pride has always been our people's greatest weakness. We thought ourselves superior, invincible, but the humans taught us a harsh lesson in humility. Zark shakes his head in disbelief. To think... The most powerful being in the galaxy, forced to kneel before a species we once considered primitive, it's almost too much to comprehend. It was a sight I'll never forget, Juno says, his voice heavy with emotion. The Emperor, his head bowed, his voice trembling as he spoke the words of apology, and the humans, their faces a mix of anger and satisfaction, watching as he admitted his defeat. Azark leans back in his chair, his mind reeling. And Terry Collins, what was his reaction to all of this? Stoic, as always, Juno replies. He stood there, his arms crossed, his eyes fixed on the Emperor, but there was something in his expression, a hint of sadness, perhaps even pity. Pity, Zark scoffs, for the Emperor? Juno shrugs. Who can say what goes on in the mind of a human? They are a complex species, capable of great cruelty and great compassion in equal measure. Zark falls silent, considering Juno's words. And what of our people? How have they reacted to the Emperor's death and the human's victory? Juno sighs. There has been much soul-searching, much debate. Some still cling to the old ways, refusing to accept that we were wrong. But others have begun to question everything we once believed, to wonder if perhaps there is another way. He looks up, meeting Zark's gaze. One thing is certain— the galaxy has changed, and we must change with it. The humans have shown us that strength comes in many forms, and that true power lies not in conquest, but in the unbreakable bonds of unity and purpose. Zark nods slowly, absorbing the weight of Juno's words. And what of you, old friend, what do you believe? Juno smiles sadly. I believe that we have much to learn from the humans and much to atone for, but I also believe that our people are strong and that we will endure as we always have. He raises his glass in a toast. To the future, whatever it may bring. Zark raises his own glass, clinking it against Juno's. To the future, he echoes, and to the lessons we have learned, however painful they may be. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88... I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.